Hey everyone! This December I coded a Christmas calendar using vanilla JavaScript and HTML canvas, and I encouraged you to contribute as well. Now it's time to see what everybody did. Peter decided to make his own version of the whole thing, and he sure outdid himself. You see, every time you click on an item, a different scene is shown with all previous items combined. I recommend you all check Peter's code to learn how he did this. It's a great learning experience, I think. There are good code structuring techniques and optimizations to make the animation run smoothly despite the items being quite complex. And the items? They look amazing! I really like the detail on the moon craters, the patterns on the snowflake, and how different his method for generating it is. The carrot and scarf leading to this really nice snowman, the multi-part cabin and subtle things like the glow different items have really make this project stand out. I mean, just look at this scene. It's easy to forget it's procedurally generated from scratch. The only nitpick I have is that you shouldn't be able to see a star here since the moon would be blocking it. But it's really the only criticism I could find. Amazing job! Krell decided to experiment with different programming languages. He made two versions, one in Go with Fine and another one using Rust. Now, I don't know any of these, but Krell got third place in the self-driving car racing competition I organized a while ago, so I trust he knows what he's doing. The Rust version randomizes snowflakes over a picture of baby Jesus, who I understand delivers the presents in the Czech Republic. Here he's drawn in Warhammer style using AI, I believe. The grid has a smooth animation, turning green with a slight orange. And the entire scene feels warmer when that happens. But the snowflakes appear on a light blue background, so the end scene looks quite cold. This effect is heightened by the transparent canvases, which kind of look like ice blocks now. The snowflakes are heavily randomized, so the number of branches varies, and the number of snowflakes can vary as well. Now, I didn't compile the fine Go variant myself, but I did have a look at the code. Starts off with some procedural items that look simple, but were surprisingly difficult to code, it seems. Especially the bell shape. Then the last ones are just images of Christmas characters. I had to do a bit of reading, and it looks like in Czech Republic the devil goes to houses as well and brings bad potatoes to naughty kids. Hope I got that right. <laughs> Francisco added three unique items to the list, and I have to say, the gingerbread man and Santa were on my list as well, but I thought they were too difficult, so I replaced them with the basic cookie shape and just a hat, if I remember right. So, really brave. <laughs> nice work. The gingerbread man is made using thick lines with a rounded cap. Then another one here, a few circles, an arc, and the bow to wrap things up. Now, Santa is really creative, I think. This one ellipse is drawn first, then a circle in the center, but just a bit upwards to let more of the beard visible. And once the hat is there, it looks like he has some hair on the sides. The hat is made of an arc, a circle, and this Bezier curve for the rim. Two overlapping ellipses for the mustache, two circles for the eyes, and there you have it. The lights are ellipses as well, placed along a curve resembling an electrical cord. They also have a slight glow, and they resemble Peter's a bit. I have to mention Peter here again, because his algorithm for placing the lights around the cord is quite nice. He actually does some image processing to find a pixel on the cord where to place the light. Thought Francisco would be interested to know this technique. James made this snowy scene, which reuses the tree and draw functions from my version in a very creative way. The pseudo 3D effect is made by drawing trees with different sizes and making sure they're sorted by Z index. And have to say, quite realistic looking sky. It's obvious James put special care in creating that color gradient. And the fog is a nice touch as well. It's made by drawing a transparent white rectangle after every tree, so the ones behind get covered more than those in front. James also added mouse interaction, so you can change the viewing angle, and he also considers mobile and touch events so they don't refresh the page by mistake. Only issue I can find is this black contour. It seems the trees in front have it, those in the middle lack it, 
and those in the back have it again. Maybe a different formula here would work even better. Perry had a submission as well. He decided to make this app that shows the code alongside the character. The code shown is modified slightly to use ES6 modules and to personalize the items a bit, but otherwise it's pretty much the same. He uses Highlight.js for syntax highlighting, but he modified it to show the line numbers. He also made the system where clicking an item on the right also scrolls to the code snippet, so you can quickly navigate the page and find the code you're looking for. And I noticed that changing to dark mode also shows the item in the top right corner. Even easier to tell if you're looking at the correct code snippet. It's a great interactive way to go through a code base, I think. Baruk focused on the snowflake and decided to use recursion. I tested the function myself and really liked the patterns. And the code is just as expected. An exit condition followed by a canvas translate and rotate for each branch. Also, good job with that tau. Ninos showed us a flip card animation for the calendar. And just seeing that reminds me of what could be done with these items. Like, this almost looks like a memory game where you flip items and try to find two pairs. And last but not least, Hans coded an item inspired by another Hans. And I have to say, I didn't know about the paper cuttings, but I do read some of his stories to my kid, so of course I knew who he was. I also checked the tutorial online and know now how to make a paper version. Maybe I'll do it next Christmas. Seeing how Hans coded this was also fun. After the handle, he rotated by 45 degrees to make things easier, and then two half circles and an alternating grid. I'll also be using this rotation trick in a future video, coming sometime in February or March, I think. I hope everyone that contributed had fun. I sure did, looking at the end results. But what do you guys think? Which one is your favorite? Tell us in the comments. Thanks for watching, and see you next year.